welcome to The Writer's Dream, a show that highlights authors and their unique experiences with writing, publishing, marketing, and promoting their books. Um, we have a Facebook page called The Writer's Dream, and we welcome your comments uh, to this page. And anything you might want to say, please visit our page. Thank you. Today, we're here to welcome um, Glenn Campbell, who is the author of a book called I Wouldn't Change a Thing. Um, he's here to talk to, to us about his unique experience um, and his inspirational book, uh, which happened uh, when he was 16 year old. Uh, he um, got into an accident, and that's the in impetus for writing his book. He's going to talk to us about that and all of his experiences with the book writing process. Um, I was very intrigued and moved by your story. Um, can you just tell us a little bit about your, your book? Um, it, it's a. It's my story. It's a story about you know my life and since I um, became disabled and when I was 16 years old, um, I was in a bicycle accident and uh, right. um, I was paralyzed from the neck down as a result. And you know the book was a really started as a series of articles when I was young when I first came home from the hospital, mm -hmm. and it took time over. It was a long progression, right. and. How long you know, did it take you? Well, it's uh, almost 20 something years. Uh, okay. You know, like just last year, I decided to finish it and you know yeah. put the articles together and make a you know a complete book mm -hmm. out of it. And um, it's just I wanted to share my story with others, um, you know, who, who have might have gone through a similar similar things, a situation. It was actually an incredible story, and I I couldn't put it down. I loved it so much. And um, I realized, um, reading it, the incredible amount of determination and courage that you must have had to go through what you did in the hospital and um, everything that you had to deal with in the hospital and going forward. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what happened um, while you were there, what, what happened, and what motivated you then to write your book? Well, the hospital experience, you know, the experience was, um, which would be unique to anyone, yes. after a serious accident. and. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I learned a lot about um, really life itself. Mm -hmm. um, learned a lot about more about myself, yeah. and it's just not. It's just it's and that life is more about the material things. Yes. That uh, life is worth the living, mm -hmm. um, even after such a severe, right. you know, um, injury. Uh, that anyone, um, you know, anyone of Whatever kind of disability they might have can contribute, and mm -hmm. you know it was it wasn't an easy lesson to learn, right. uh, but one you know that took over time. Yes, um, you had a, a, a chance to be introspective about your life while you were in the hospital and reflect on many things. So that um, I, I read that it increased your faith. Um, I wanted what happens is I read a paragraph in here in your book, and. Uh, I thought it was so significant and profound that I wanted to share it with everyone. Is it okay if I read, this, sure. read it? Okay. This is when you were um, in the hospital and you went through quite a few different experiences that were very challenging to say the least. Um, he, he says, at times it was easier for me to accept the unacceptable rather than hold out hope for what was lost. I was okay with that. I'm not saying that that always made me feel better, but the reality was I would be paralyzed for the rest of my life. It would be years before I truly understood the meaning and power of prayer. Today I have no doubt that there is a God, and I continually look to explain his presence in my life. Interestingly, this has taught me that my greatest shortcoming is that I look too much for the obvious. As I have opened my eyes to the subtle and significant things in my life, I have realized that many of those prayers have already been answered. That was a beautiful passage. There are quite a few beautiful passages in your book but I really was uh, very touched by that. Um, you have incredible determination and a, and a different perspective on life because of this experience. And what was the turning point what, for you when, you when you realized how thankful you felt for the life you, you now have? You know, it was a, it was a progression, I think. Um, I think the most um, early on, most significant yes. um, event that happened was when I was in the ICU, my intensive care unit yes. in Bellevue Hospital, and there was a, uh, a young boy um, who was in the bed next to me. And I knew he was very sick, and 
uh, he had passed away. Mm-hmm. You know, he died and only, you I know, feet him. away from me. Yeah. And that was very significant because here I was still alive yeah. and he wasn't. And so that was very significant. And that's, that started my, my understanding mm-hmm. of really what life is about. Mm-hmm. And, and I went on and I saw people who were more disabled than myself and less. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I knew what I had. Right. And my family support, yes. um, the outrageous. You had a very support, supportive family. Extre- extremely yes. supportive mm-hmm. um, so family. And that, that meant a great deal to me. And, you know, those were like the building blocks. And mm-hmm. as I learned, you know, that life, as I learned that life wasn't over, right. you know, because of my disability, um, I, I, my appreciation for it grew. Mm-hmm. And even my, my, my spiritual belief and my faith also grew um, yes. from, from a progression. Right. So did you find that writing the, the book was also a cathartic experience for you? Did it help you get through all of those powerful emotions that you went through in the hospital and, the, and after that to uh, you know, overcome a lot of the obstacles that were in your path? And you did overcome them amazingly. In the beginning, with, uh, it was, I would say in the beginning it was therapeutic. Yes. Um, and as I discussed in my book, it was a, a dear friend of mine uh, of our family's, uh, um, Barbara Mallet, who she, mm-hmm. um, I had her as a teacher. Yes, I remember. And, you know, she would come over and we would talk about different things. And at the time, I, I really thought I was writing articles, but really it, that was very therapeutic. And I, um, that was the beginning. And mm-hmm. um, also, you know, throughout the time I was writing the book, you know, I would look to other people, my parents and mm-hmm. my friends, and I would talk about it, and right. I would get ideas and say, what was it really like? You know, mm-hmm. what was it like for you, right. you know, um, when I was going through this? And, right. And it, it, it gave me a foundation, on. yeah, yeah. Uh, to write the book. But so I would say, you know, it, it, it was cathartic in a sense yes. um, that I was able to, you know, uh, look deep inside and in those feelings that I haven't thought about mm-hmm. in a long time. Right. Um, right. And like I said, I just completed it last year, so. That's wonderful. Um, I'm going to ask you now, go back to, I know you went to school, um, you went back to school um, to Toro University, you finished, you got your, your high school degree, um, and then you went back to, and you just went back to school and got your undergraduate degree, and then you decided to um, go into law, and you went to Toro University. So can you tell us how that was, and also tell us, I know you're an uh, attorney now, and you have other things in the background. We'll discuss that also. Um, well, you know, my dream was when I was young, at least in high school, uh, my, I guess my practical dream was to be, become an architect. Um, yes. I, I loved to draw. Uh, but, you know, computers were new. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, that was, I guess, my, my goal at the time. Is, mm-hmm. And that changed. That, that obviously drastically changed when I had my right. accident. Mm-hmm. And... But my goal was to, you know, finish high school, which I did, right. and uh, go on to college. Mm-hmm. And the law school was, uh, law school was, not in my, not in my mind at the time. Mm-hmm. That um, you know, I realized that I needed an occupation. Right. I wanted to be independent. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be able to, you know, have a job that I could say, mm-hmm. um, you know, be successful at, right. and you know, give me a career. And I was thinking long term, mm-hmm. and I started thinking long term at a younger age. I realized that you know, yes, I'm disabled. I'm going to have challenges mm-hmm. that I need to overcome, and you know, that was where law school came. I never thought I would be an attorney growing up. Yeah. Um, I actually had no desire when I was young, right. but uh, it came about, and I'm, I'm happy I did it. Yeah, very motivating. Very motivating story. <laughs> um, so let's discuss writing now. We'll go on to the writing now. Um, what was your favorite aspect of the writing process? Um, I, I, th- I think, um, again, looking deep inside, um, uh, I think that was my favorite part, to really be able to um, look at myself, look what I overcame, and right. put it down on paper. And put your thoughts down. Put, yeah, I yeah. think that was, it wasn't easy, but um, right. I did enjoy it. Um, yeah. Frustrating at times, right? Um, but you know, with uh, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I was determined to get it done. Yes. And uh, but 
that was my favorite part, I think. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, I know I read in your book that you uh, um, were able to use new computer technology that allowed you to talk into a, 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 some kind of a speaker that allowed you the words to form on the screen for you. That well, was when, back in mm, what? Yes. When I first started high school, when I came over to the hospital, I started high school, there was a, I had a very archaic computer that right. I would pick and choose letters by a switch. And, right. and it was time consuming. It was, it was tiring. Um, mm -hmm. And then this new technology came out, voice activation, where I could actually speak the words yes. into a microphone and it would appear on screen. That's amazing. And that evolved. And I, you know, I was able to finish college that way in law school. And now yes. I use it for, you know, as an attorney, I use it yeah. um, to, um, you know, to write, so. Yeah, it's an amazing tool. Um, and what was, well, obviously, the most challenging aspect of the writing process uh, for you, um, what, what was it? Was it, I mean, did you write during the mornings, or did you find that you did it at night, or different times of the day when, when something would come into your head, or what? Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a night owl. So, so yeah. I, you know, usually would, and I, I would use it as a, a form of relaxation, too. Right. You know, I would settle down, I would put my computer in front of me, and, um, you know, I would just write. I just, l I learned, uh, the one thing I did learn is just, just, just write, yeah. um, and it'll come together. The and, flow, just thoughts you know, just the, flowed. Yeah. yeah, and, um, you know, the corrections would, the editing would, would come later, mm -hmm. uh, right. but, you know, that's really how I did it. Um, mm -hmm. I just, just wrote. And, right, it's uh, always whether, fun. The writing part is fun, right? Whether with, yeah, whether it was a paragraph. Yeah. Or three pages a night, whatever it might be. Right. Um, so it's, it feels like an accomplishment to get some those thoughts down on, on the computer. Yes. And one less chapter to go. <laughs> um, uh, did you ever get writer's block? And if you did get writer's block, what did you do to overcome it? You know, that's a phrase you always hear. You know, people get writer's yeah. block, and <laughs> you really know, you really understand what it means when it happens to yes. you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's it's frustrating. It does. It's. Uh, you know, but again, if, if if the challenge was getting something on paper and whether, right. uh, like I said, it was just a sentence. Um, mm -hmm. But I would, you know, I would look to other people, um, get some ideas. Right. And, you know, sometimes they would say, well, try this or try that. Right. And a lot of times that worked. Did you get ideas from people around you, your family, your friends? Absolutely, yeah, because, mm -hmm. you know, they went through it with me. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, my, my, my wife was very supportive during this yeah. time. You know, and, and she would give me ideas, and how, I would, did, how did you meet your wife? I was going to ask you that. Uh, my wife was actually one of my nurses mm -hmm. uh, when I came off from the hospital again. Yeah. Uh, you know, she really appeared at my door one day, and uh, you know, it's it's a friendship, almost an immediate friendship. Um, yeah. I happened to have her dad as a teacher. Yes. In, in mm -hmm. junior high school, mm -hmm. and we had a lot in Small common. Small world, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fellow author Linda Marie and Frank, both of us realized that through this whole process that uh, marketing and publishing and uh, marketing and promoting your books is so important. Um, it's probably the single most important thing you can do. What have you done um, to market and promote your book? When did it come out? Um, in January in this January? year. In okay, January? What, what have you done? It's one of the most difficult things, I think, aspects of, of after writing the book is to market and promote it. Uh, mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I look to other people for assistance. Mm -hmm. You know, the publisher that I had, um, you know, the internet, mm -hmm. um, just going and speaking, you know, engagements right. and things like that. Right. Um, it's not an easy task. No, it's, it takes it's a lot of work, especially if a you, lot of time. Yeah. you know, if already have if you already have a full time job. Right. Um, yeah. It's difficult, but you know, I learned if you at least if you do a little at a time, mm -hmm. um, and you know, things appear some. Right. You get the opportunities and just take advantage of them. Right. Um, but I encourage everybody to, you know, make a point um, and come up with a plan, right. because it's 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 difficult and you want to sell your books. It's just you a know, part you of want to share you, your story. Right. You it's know. part of your marketing. Right. That's you. You want people to be aware of it. That's only a part of it. Then there's the social media. Uh, yes. That's so important. Do you have yes. to do anything like that? Facebook or Facebook, tw Twitter. You know, web page, Twitter. Yeah. You know, all the things that, you know, I do these things. Yeah. And um, again, also. you just have to, you know, you have to be steadfast. Right. Uh, yeah, it takes time to even do that. Yeah. Yeah. And the web page, of course, is another tool on the marketing. Yes. Right. So um, how much research did you have to do, if, if any, 
prior to publishing your book on publishers, because there's so many publishers out there. As you know, it's an exploding industry now with people self-publishing their books, and there's so many publishers, and researching them is another task. What did you have to do, and what, how, who did you choose? Well, uh, you know, in the beginning, uh, you know, I, I submitted my, my book to, uh, quote, mainstream publishers, you know. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, um, involved on that, yeah. It, it's, it, again, it, it's, it's not easy to get your book published. Yes, it's um, very yeah, difficult you know, now. It, it's, it's frustrating, and you mm -hmm. just got to keep trying. It seems that uh, celebrities and people who are, have books published already are the first people who can get their books published now. It's very, very hard to break in if you don't have that. It's difficult. And so I started researching self-publishing. Mm -hmm. um, some people give me some recommendations. And uh, mm -hmm. someone re re referred me to uh, Legwork Publishing. Right. Um, and, you know, I... I was impressed um, by their attitude mm -hmm. um, and you know the, some of the success that they had, mm -hmm. and um, I decided to go with them, and I'm, I'm very pleased I did. Uh, did you did you just want someone that was local as opposed to a, a publisher that was out of the state? Because I preferred that. Yeah, uh, that's what. And that's you know, um, th th this publication company was is not too far from where I where I, really? where I lived, so I was able to mm -hmm. go to them when I needed to and. But a lot of it was done by email, um, right. a lot of the editing process, uh, yes. you know, which, is, which made it a lot easier. Right. Yeah, Legwork is my, my publisher as well. I used them because I wanted someone local and a friend of mine also, like you, recommended them. So, that, so it's important for to do a lot of research. Would you agree that on, the, uh, on looking at publishers, though, or to find yes, somebody it's, that it's important. Yeah. suits your yeah. needs? Yeah, referrals always help, but... Yeah. Even publishers have their specialties, yes. and um, you got to understand that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's you know it's an investment, and it's a truly yes. an investment. It and, is an um, investment. You yeah. know you want to make the best of it. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so, do you think that your book is as successful as you want it to be right now, um, or do you have ideas to make it more successful? If if not, you know I have no real way really judging that. I I think. You know, I, I, I feel it stands on its own. Yes. Um, I've I, got I loved it. I read it in a weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Well, thank you. I've got, I've got some nice feedback on it. Uh, you know, my friends and I, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, through the different bookstores. That, you know, I'm I sure know. it's on Barnes and & Noble and Amazon. Amazon.com. Yeah. That's good. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm happy with, with the progress. I'm happy with, mm -hmm. I guess you want to say sales. Um, but, you know, my goal was to write it. Right. You know, uh, I when I first began writing, I didn't think about marketing. I didn't think about right. promoting it. That was really it was your memoir. It was kind it, of like exactly. something you had to get out yeah. on paper. Yeah, I'm very proud of it. I am because yes, it be. was uh, it was wasn't easy yeah. um, at times, but I am right. I'm very proud of it. Yes, you should be. It's a great book. Um, one of the, our guests said that you can have a great idea, work very hard at all aspects of the process of making your book successful but there needs to be someone to anoint you, like having Oprah <laughs> or a major television network discover you. Um, have you been anointed yet, or are you looking forward to something like that? I don't think I have. Um, I'm not sure I will it's be. It's tough theory to get you into know, also. Uh, um, you know, uh, again, I, I really refer to the, the support of the friends and family that right. I have. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's going to be anointed, it would be them. Yeah. Um, you know they've given me that support, mm -hmm. and I, I, and I look to them a lot, um, right. and I continue to do. Yes. Um, but you have a great support network with your family, from what I read in your book. Uh, I do very yeah. much so. And you have a grandson. Yeah. Yes, I do. Uh, Christian. Christian. Yes. Yeah. How old is he? Yeah, he's four now. Yeah. Yeah. Dave, birthday's the day before mine, so I have to share my birthday now. When is your birthday? Yeah, you know, April eighteenth. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's that's nice, isn't that great? Seeing it is. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's such a great. You know, it's it's a great feeling. It's it's, you know, you don't realize it um, until you. Yeah, have, you know. I have one who's the same age. It's it's a joy. It <laughs> certainly is. Um, how, what is the greatest misconception about writing a book, in your opinion? <laughs> um, Broad question, I guess. Getting it, yeah. <laughs> Well, getting it done, I think, yeah. is you don't realize, you really don't realize the time and effort it's going to take. Yeah. You know, it's not just putting words on paper. Right. And it's just a long process, uh, right. writing it, editing it, re-editing it. Yeah, the editing and process editing it again. over and know. over. Did you find, I know you said you 
went to traditional route also. I also did that. Um, and then I decided to have it self-published. But uh, you know, it's, it's a long process with the traditional route because you have to wait for the response. And then you get the, the letters in the mail, the rejection letters. And then it takes a while for them to even answer you. It does. And that was frustrating. Um, it, it was, and that's why I chose to self-publish as well. Right. You know, Me I, too. I, I wanted to get it. I, I, I wanted to get it done, right. and you know, that's when I said, "Okay, let me self-publish this." I think the most difficult part, though, in writing the book is when to say, "I'm done," right. is that you can edit it a hundred times, yes. but at some point you have to close it and say, "You know, there's no more I can do," yeah. and just leave it. And, You're right. And that's one of the most, I think, difficult parts because. Right. You, know, you can edit it to death. Well, I did. I did the same thing. I edited it over. Every time I sent to a publisher, I, I'd get the rejection letter, then I'd edit it. I must have edited my book a hundred times. Yes. <laughs> and then put it on the back burner. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, let's see. Um, what is the most important thing you would like to say to your readers and, and about yourself? Well, you know, I'm just I'm average. I'm an average person. You know, um, I'm somebody who um, has a disability, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, like I said, I, I get up in the morning, I go to bed, and I think the one thing that people don't realize that when you see somebody with disability, that there's much more to their lives that you might not understand, but they are just, they're an average person. Right. Um, and, you know, I welcome people to come up to me and say, what happened? Right. And I, I hope that they do so I can share it with like them. like to talk about you know, it. That's good. Um, yeah. And especially with children, mm -hmm. you know, that they're curious. Yes. And, you know, you're Naturally. amazed by what they see and what they know and how they perceive things. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and I love children for that because they're so innocent. They're so innocent. They they're just so say innocent. what's on their minds. Yeah. yeah. But, um, you know, there's, there's a lot of, you know, when somebody looks at someone with a disability or in a wheelchair, they they don't know and they right. make assumptions and so forth right and um but you know just an average person right. and uh you know a, a disability is just a word right. you know it's just a word um that's really it well you you talking about uh, disability you had uh your co co-director of uh it's the uh silo uh nonprofit the acronym uh can you tell us about that organization um, and why you became involved in that. I, I guess just tell us your story about why you can became involved with that. Well, I'm, no, I'm actually no longer with them, but okay. yeah. Oh, I but, saw it in the book. But yeah, it was, you know, it was um, before. Yeah. The, you know, advocacy. When yes. I, um, after my disability, after the, uh, you know, I was able to settle down at home. I realized that I had something to share. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I remember be, I wanted to become an advocate and that's where it all started. That would help other people or right. just speak with other people. And, you know, that's what I wanted to do. Even right. after becoming an attorney, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to use what I had, my, you know, my personal knowledge as right. well as my, your knowledge my professional your knowledge mm -hmm. where I can help people. And, um, and that's, they really, that's what I do. Right. And, you know, even working for Silo, that's, that was, you know, that was my goal. And, uh, what does Silo stand for again? Um, Suffolk Independent Living Organization. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, the name of your book, I Wouldn't Change a Thing, you emphatically state in your book that you wouldn't change a thing, and it's very profound, very profound. Tell us why you feel this way. It's a very meaningful message, and um, I understood it when I read the book, but I would like you to share that with people. I understood it, yeah. It's, you know, so many wonderful things have happened to me okay. as a result of the accident. Mm -hmm. And if it that, if that never occurred, um, I would just be probably an ordinary teenager at the time and mm -hmm. so forth. Um, I have wonderful friends as a result. Yes. I have my wife, yes. who I wouldn't have probably met. Right. Uh, and I have a beautiful home and family. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't imagine not having them in my life. Right. And, you know, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. You know, I, my life is difficult. It is. You, um, but I, you, know, you seem happy with it and at peace with it. Um, I, I am. Yeah. I am. You know, it's. I have challenges every day, yeah. but they're worth every bit of them because mm -hmm. I have what I have, and um, I wouldn't give it up for anything. It's wonderful. Um, you um, 
tell us about uh, what your plans are for the future. Maybe do you have another book on the horizon or anything else planned as far as the book or another book? Sequel? Well, I, I, I am actually currently you know, putting more words down in paper. Um, you know, I wanted to, you know, everybody, everybody talks about the American dream and what it really means. And uh, I want to tell that dream, I want to tell that what the American dream means to me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not just, not just about my st story. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's about what I have. Right. Um, and how that, how that happened and what, you know, achieving those goals meant right. to me and, mm -hmm. you know, the difficulties, especially from the perspective of somebody with a disability because mm -hmm. they're much different. Right. Those American dreams don't, those American dreams are, you know, are, are much of a, a much larger scale because mm -hmm. there are much, there are greater challenges right. um, to achieve that dream. Right. And I wanted to expand on that and, and further my story from, from my, my, my book, I Wouldn't Change a Thing because there's a lot more to tell about that. Yes. You know, that oh, story. Yeah. yeah. And uh, what accomplishments or personal things that you'd like to share about your life with the audience? Any accomplishments that you're most proud of? Um, besides the children in your life and your, I mean, you have so many reasons to be thankful and those are accomplishments in itself. Is there anything else you'd like to share? You know, just being able to be me. Right. I, I think that's really the greatest accomplishment that, you know, um, overcoming, I like to say overcoming a disability mm -hmm. and being able to life, live the life that I have. Um, that's really my, my, my biggest accomplishment because, yeah. you know, the other thing, everything just fell into place. Yeah. You know, but I'm, I'm here, um, I'm alive. Talk about it. I'm here yeah. to talk about it. Yeah. Um, it really is my future. I hope, you know, I, I want to grow. I want to gr continue to grow. Um, I want to continue to advocate for others uh, on, a, on a much larger scale. And I think this is the opportunity where I can do that. I think it's great. Thank you so much, Glenn, for being here. And I'm glad I met you in person. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. Uh -huh.